You know, one of the problems with doing videos like this is that you really can't hide how bald you're getting. Hi everybody and welcome to another exciting edition of Boring JavaScript. I'm your host, The Virtualoid, aka Mike Smith, and today we're going to be talking about the bind method in JavaScript. Have you ever created event handlers or callback functions for set interval or set timeout? And you're just going along your merry way, you said this equals that, and suddenly everything blew up on you because this was not this anymore? Well, bind will help you fix that. Bind will take any variable and make it the this property of a function. You want to see how it works? Let's get started. So to show you how bind works, I'm going to start with a very simple and admittedly somewhat weird example. So let's just go through it real quick. Here is an animals array. And the idea here is I'm going to have a function name called get animal name that will be passed an animal type. And it will go through the array, just do a little, for, a little find through the array here to find out the it matches the type, and if the type matches, it's going to return the name of the animal. So that when I call get animal name, it's going to sh it should print out the name of my cat is uh, Fluffy in this case, because I'm searching for cat, as you can see here in line 18. So what's weird about this function, and, and you normally don't want to program it this way, but again, this is just for demonstration purposes, is that on line 14 here, I'm saying the animal is equal to this dot find. So what get animal name is expecting is that it's this argument is going to be some sort of array. And it's going to call the find method to be able to find the uh, animal type. Real simple. But the problem is in this context right here within node, this is equated to the global object. So there is no find method here. So if I was to run this right now, let's flip over to node and type in node bind. It should blow up on us, but it sure did. Again, why? Because this has no find function because this is associated with the global object. So how do we fix that? Well, we fix that by using bind. What bind will do is that if you bind, if you call the bind uh, method on a function name, then this, or the function object actually, the, op the object, the function, when it gets called, will have the bind argument as it's this argument. So basically what we'll say here is that when we bind something to the function, the object that we're passing within the bind argument, which I'll show you here in just a second, will then become the this argument for the function. So let me show you exactly how that will work. I just happen to have the code down here. And what we'll do here is we'll replace line 19. And I'm gonna just come out the old line 19 and pop in the new one here, to show you the difference between the two. So here is the only difference we have is this section here. And basically what I've done is I've got the function name, get animal name, but instead of calling it like a regular function, I am first calling the bind to it. And what this does here is bind takes one argument and this will make the argument the this object for that function. So I'm binding it with animals. That means that the this function will be animals once it calls get animal name, which is correct now. So this now, so this basically becomes animals, which is what we wanted. If I was to say bind my animal here, then cat would become the this argument, which of course is not in our case is wrong. But what this will do with the bind function is that it will automatically take animals and make it the this argument within this function. So now it should work correctly because this is animals. And since animals is an array, as you can tell up here, and find is a method on the array, I should get my answer of my name of my cat is Fluffy. Let's just flip over to node and see if that is true or not. Let's clear off the screen. Go to node bind. Sure enough, it worked. And the reason it worked is because, let me flip back over to the code. The reason it worked is because on line 20 now, I am binding animals to the function, which effectively makes animals the this argument. Now, this is just a very contrived and very simple, and honestly, you don't want to kind of do this kind of thing with in production, but what is a real life example of using bind? Well, we'll cover that next. So what's a good real life example of how to use bind? Well, let me show you. I've got a class here 
called zoo, that whenever we create an instance of it, it has an animal's uh, property, a timer property, and count property. It's got three simple little methods. Uh, get animal name, which gets the animal name. And this time it uses this correctly because this represents the instance of our zoo class. Show random animals or show me 10 random animals. And I'm calling this dot get random animal, which is no big deal. And get random animal down here will, of course, will randomize an animal knowing uh, that this animal is the length of the animal, this animal is the actual animals themselves, I print it out, and I decrement the count. And once the count hits zero, I'm gonna clear that interval. So the idea here is that when you call show random animals, it's going to give me one animal per second. And so I've done that up here on, with a set interval, and I've done that on purpose to kind of give you an idea that, uh, well, not really an idea, but to simulate, let's say, a server call. So, you know, we're getting this random animal, so we're making a server call. So I'm kind of just simulating that server call to show you that, you know, something is happen happening asynchronously. Because, you know, you do a server call, you don't know when you can get that data back. And so at one point it's going to come back and then you process. And that's kind of what's happening here is that I don't know when it's going to process. And when it does, I do the get random animal. So this should give me 10 animals listed one at a time uh, once every second. So let's flip back over to node and let's type in node set interval. I hope I spelled that right. And we started off and it says my personal, oh, what happened? My personal cat is fluffy, but then it said this dot animals that length. You cannot read property length of undefined. Well, we know animals is defined. This dot animals is definitely defined. I mean, let's, let's go back over to our code. Well, there it is right there. This dot animals is definitely defined. And this represents the instance of a zoo, right? Right? Well, obviously, you know it doesn't, or else it wouldn't have aired out. And the reason that it didn't is because set interval itself is part of the global space within node and within the browser within browser to be a window it is not within this so even though we're passing this dot get random animal and it knows to call the get random animal method when it actually gets to random animal this is actually the global workspace not the instance of zoo and so for so of course when it got to this animals dot length it was going to blow up because this dot animals doesn't exist in the global space as of this doesn't count also doesn't exist on the global space and this dot timer doesn't exist on the global space so that's what bind can now do for you is to basically say oh okay okay i know that set interval is going to change this for that particular function i need to switch it back to it will, where it will represent the current instance i am working with so let's bring up that code and show you how that's done and it's just a very simple little change. So I'm gonna comment out the old code, just like I did on the other one, and pop that back on there. All I did was add this section right here on line 24, the dot bind this. So remember, bind will take whatever argument you have and make it the this object for the function. So here's my function, this.getRandomAnimal, which is obviously this method down here on line 27, and I am binding it with this. And at the time that this line, this, this, I'm using the word this all over the place. At the time when the present line, line 24 is executed, this is still the instance of our zoo class. So from its point of view, this is the instance of the zoo class. So when get random animal is now called, this is no longer the global space, but the instance of the zoo class. So now animals.length should work. Now this.count should work. And now this.timer should work. Because no longer, as it was up here, we're going to get the global namespace as the this. We're now, because of our bind, we're going to get the zoo instance that we have created as part of our this. Want to see it work? Sure you do. Let's go back over to node. Let's clear off our screen. And let's cross our fingers. Hit enter. There's my personal cat, Fluffy. And there are our 10 random animals. And again, it works this time because we have redefined this for the get random animal. And that's very important for some of these asynchronous handlers. Uh, if you're in the browser world, for example, if you got click handlers, change event handlers, uh, blurs, things like that, you know, anything that has to deal with, you know, forms or click events or anything that happens on the browser, when the functions are called, when you call, when you set up those add event listeners, 
the this is the this for those functions is always going to be the global namespace because that's how JavaScript works. So you'll need to put the bind there if you want to be able to associate it with the particular instance that you're working with. So this is a beautiful example that I guarantee you're going to run across with using with using bind. Bind allows you to be able to circumvent the default this for asynchronous operations or for functions like set interval or set timeout that are associated with the global function and give you the this that you need. Now next I'm going to show you one place where it doesn't quite work and it doesn't work by design. That's next. So where can you get in trouble with using bind? Well you don't really get in trouble. Where place one place bind does not work is when you're using arrow functions. And let me show that to you here real quick. I've got my original program and I have changed the get animal name from a regular function to an arrow function. For instance, if we go back to our first example, notice here that get animal name is indeed just a regular old function, while here in my new program it is now an arrow function as defined as of right there. Now other than that, it's exact same code, I've got the this.find, so we should expect, if we go over to node, that it should blow up on us because this is obviously the global object, correct? So if we go to arrow, Boom, yep, this dot find is not there, obviously, and we expected that. So if to, we need to fix it, let's go back over and let's just pop in the word bind animals, which was the fix that we had before. And of course, obviously, that will bind the animals variable as the this object to get animal name. So if we go back over to node and we type in CLS, and do it again, we get it blown up again. It still says this is not a function. So what happened here? Well, arrow functions are a little special and they're developed to be more of what we call functional type programming where you don't, you have a limited amount of outside influences. So by default, and there are a few exceptions, but by default, an arrow functions, this is always blank, just a blank object and bind cannot change that. So if we were to take a look back, look at the code here, just because I have the bind here, because it is an arrow function, it's going to completely ignore that bind and just still assume that this is a blank object. I'm gonna prove it, let's prove it here. So we still have the bind down there. Let's do a console.log, let's do a console.log, uh, here is my this. In fact, let's put a couple of dashes there so we can see it a little bit better. So here is my this, and then we'll console.log this, and let's just put another marker right here. There was, let's make it, there was my list. Might as well be grammatical here. So I just basically want to put in between those two console.logs what the this looks like. We still have our bind down here, so technically on a regular function that should have been the this object or the animals object. Uh, however, like I said, arrow functions will always have a blank this and will ignore bind. So now if we go over to node and we do a CLS and let's take a look at arrow, as you can tell, there it is. The, even though the bind was there, because it's an arrow function, it completely ignored this and made this to be a empty object. So the, the, the takeaway here is that if you do have an arrow function, don't use bind. If you need to use bind, define it as a regular function and you'll never go wrong. So again, just to be on the safe side, make sure you do know this. If you have arrow functions, you can't use bind. And that's all to using bind with JavaScript. I hope you enjoyed our video. Hope it didn't bore you to death. Please visit all of our videos at www.boringjavascript.com. Subscribe to our YouTube channel or check out everything we have at www.thevirtualoid.com. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you later.